Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to do a huge middle grade haul. So honestly, like I've kind of lost track of where all these came from. I know Christian Books was having a huge sale. Um, Pango got me a couple times. We went to some little free libraries. Uh, I think maybe that's it. I don't know, but we've got a lot of books to get through and these are all middle grade to varying ages. Some of them are books that I'll hand my girls right now. Um, some of them are books that will stay until they get a little bit older. So let's just get into it. So we have uh, The Tiger Rising by Kate DiCamillo. So honestly, I bought this um, because I love Kate DiCamillo and this is a National Book Award finalist. Um, it says, walking through the misty Florida woods one morning, young Rob Horton discovers a large and very real tiger in a cage. On the same extraordinary day, he meets Sistine Bailey and begins to understand that some things like memories and heartache and tigers can't be locked up forever. So I trust Kate DiCamillo and I'm excited to read it. Then we have I Am Malala. Um, this, I've never read this book. I don't know how. It's a memoir of one girl who stood up for education and changed the world. Um, this is the Young Readers Edition. So I'm not sure what exactly that means, but this was the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, about Malala in the Talib ta um, when the Taliban took control of her region in Pakistan. So I'm, I'm really intrigued to read this myself. Then we have um, some, I've never even heard of these before, but they're like Disney spinoff books. So we have um, Mulan's Secret Plan. So this is Disney before the story. We have Elsa's Icy Rescue. And then I don't think this one is the same. It's Disney Princess Beginnings, but Jasmine's New Rules. These, like, we have seen Frozen many a times. We have not seen Mulan or Aladdin, um, but it would be really fun to, like, watch and read. So, and they're in great condition. I don't know where they're from, but this is number, I think, number four in the Disney Princess. Um, and then one and two in the before the story. So, I definitely want to look more into those because those could be fun. Then we have a classic Pippi Longstocking. Um, don't feel like I need to say much about that. We've got Lori Hall's Anderson um, Chains. So this is also a National Book Award finalist and a Scott O'Dell Award. Um, so I really like Lori Hall's Anderson and have read a lot of powerful books by her. So this one is, um, I don't even know what it's about, honestly. Maybe, I, maybe it's better to go in blind. Because this is definitely one that I will probably read by myself. It does have a reading group guide. Um, so that could be fun. But this is definitely one for when they're older. And one that I'll read for myself now. Then we have uh, The Library Card by Jerry Spinelli. Jerry Spinelli is another kind of auto-buy. Uh, if I see a book for a dollar or something, I'm going to grab it. I haven't read this one. But um, this is about Mongoose, Brenda, Sansere, and April have nothing in common until a mysterious blue card appears as if by magic and begins to change each of their lives. None of them guesses it at first, but that strange blue card will be their ticket to the past and to a future they never imagined. So, looks cool. Then we have, this is one my kids picked out at the Little Free Library, um, Blubber by Judy Bloom. This one uh, is an older book, and I'm definitely going to be pre-reading this one because I'm not sure that it, like, this is, gosh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say what year it was originally published, or else I'm not looking in the right spot. Here we go, 1974. So I imagine this could be pretty problematic, but if you've read it, let me know if I should even bother reading it. Next, we have um, The Fabled Fourth Graders of Aesop Elementary School. Uh, again, another free library. Uh, the fourth grade students at Aesop Elementary School have a reputation for being rambunctious, precocious, and special. Um, and so it's about a kid that wants to go back to kindergarten, um, but then he gets a chance and he's forced to do the squirrel dance and wear a yellow school bus name tag. And then there's another girl um, who can spell wildebeest, no problemo. She's sure she'll ace her spelling test, but she shouldn't count her chickens before they've hatched. Um, yeah, so it's about this whole class. Sounds sounds sweet. Then we have um, one of the A to Z mysteries. This is November night, so calendar mysteries. Maybe this isn't A to Z mysteries. Okay, so the A to Z mysteries are really cute um, mystery stories, and everyone is like, like mummies magic or whatever there's one for every letter well apparently there's calendar mysteries too so maybe one for every month of the year i guess i'm going to start a new collection why not then we have uh the dolphin diaries we have a couple of these i don't know this is number seven i think we have one through four my kids love these so there's another one uh following the rainbow i've never read them but i think they they love them so i'm guessing they're cute 
Then we have uh, another in The Horrible Harry and the Green Slime. I haven't read these either. These are early chapter books um, that my daughter likes, but they're definitely um, minimum, like, of course, I open to a full page. They're not pictures on every page, but um, kind of close to it. So these are good for kind of early chapter books. Then we have the Mother Goose Diaries. Um, I'm not sure what this is, honestly, but I like we love Mother Goose and have a ton of fairy tale and like all those kind of thing books. And so um, this could be fun. Then we have 11 birthdays. Um, on their first birthday, they learned to walk. On their fifth, they planted seeds in, a, in homemade pots. And their tenth, they learned there are some, some words you can never take back. Amanda's 11th birthday should be a happy occasion. Instead, she's dressed in an itchy costume her mother picked out for her boring Hollywood-themed party. Meanwhile, across town, her ex-best friend Leo is celebrating their joint birthday with a huge bash, including a hypnotist, a football star, a giant iguana, and a rock star. So not fair. Um, so she can't she can't wait till her birthday's over so she can stop thinking about the fight. This probably will be pretty relatable when my kids are in those tween years. I remember those years, and there's a lot of petty stuff. Then we have um, this whole Jack Russell dog detective series. Um, this is let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10 books. Um, so they, these were from Christian books. And I like, so I'm fine to hand these on. And um, yeah, I don't know. I love dog stories and so my girls. So there's that. Then we have two of the um, American Girl books. So we've got Meat Kit and also um, Meet Samantha. And so these are all in different times. Um, so this Meat Kit, I think, is the Depression. Um, and this one is 1904. And so it's a good way to learn about history. Um, I know there's a, a certain, I can't remember who, but somebody does, um, like has units, uh, history units based on these books. So I've been trying to collect them anywhere I can get them for a good price. Then we have um, 65 short mysteries you solve with math. One minute mysteries. So we love these kind of things. And this will be fun just to go through maybe one a day. Um, sometime I don't know well I have to see how hard they are I think it, do, it doesn't say it doesn't say how old the kids should be but um yeah we can look through that soon this I don't know how to turn this off because this thumbs down situation is not pleasant but anyway we have The Giver by Lewis Lowry this is one of my favorite books as a kid and I remember like doing a study about it and I would love to recreate that um yeah won the Newbery Award it's a utopian society and this was really good um, then we have this Angel Wings series. Um, it's four books. We've got New Friends, Birthday Surprise, Secrets and Sapphires, Rainbows and Halos. Um, this is another from Christian Books, and it's about Guardian Angel in training. Ella Brown and her new friends at the Guardian Angel Academy have plenty of adventures up in the clouds. Join Ella and her friends as they venture to Rainbow's Inn, suffer a glittery birthday party disaster, care for an injured magical bunny, and slide down rainbows on sports days. Sounds great. Then we have, um, let's see, we've got one of the Babysitter's Club Little Sisters. Um, like I said, I think I've got the first like 30 or 40 and my daughter's almost through them all. And so again, if I can find them for a dollar, sure, I'll buy it. Then we have Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. I could have sworn I had this on my um, on my bookshelf, but apparently I don't. So I bought a copy. I really like this book. Um, this is about a unique girl in, does it say what grade? Um she's either in middle school or early high school and this was so good then we have another kind of classic the phantom toll booth um, by norton jester another one that i just haven't um haven't found a copy of so there we go now we do then we have uh kind of reaching the lemonade ward by jacqueline davies never read this one but um, this is about Evan Tresky. He's people smart. He's good at talking to people, even grownups. His younger sister, Jessie, on, on, the, on the other hand, is math smart, but not especially good at understanding people. She knows that feelings are her weakest subject, so when her lemonade, their lemonade war begins, there's no telling who will win or if their fight will ever end. So there's that. This is, like I think, another kind of classic, like a modern classic. I've heard a lot about this. So, um, yeah, there's that. Okay. Continuing on, we have um, Vinegar vinegar Pancakes and Vanishing Cream by Bonnie Pryor. This is like 50 cents, and it completed a Pango order. So, um, warm and funny family story. Fifth grader Samantha Tate feels that life is not the way she would like it to be. She's the average middle school ch middle child in a family with exquisitely beautiful younger sister and a highly intelligent older brother. Um, 
Let's see. Her widowed mother announces she will remarry and they'll leave their Pacific Ocean home. Um, she doesn't. She wants to stop the marriage. So, um, yeah, I think this will be interesting for sure. Then we have Nothing's Fair in Fifth Grade, um, but Things Can Get Better by Bart Bart de Clements, maybe. Um, so I am already guessing this is not going to be good. When Fat Elsie Edwards walks into Jenny Sawyer's, yeah, I think I'm probably just going to go ahead and unhaul this because describing a girl that way, not ideal. Um, 1981, yeah, probably going to go ahead and just unhaul this one. Again, it was like part of a pango deal. It was 50 cents and it ended up getting me either free shipping or a discount. So here we are. Then we have the mystery at Big Ben. Um, this is number one in the passport, passport mysteries or something. Carol, Carol Marsh mysteries. Um, so I think this is going to be like a mystery, but also some geography about Big Ben and learning about, um, that area. So there's that. Then we have a Goosebumps book. Uh, this was a quarter, so it's Let's Get Let's Get Invisible. I don't think we have any of the Goosebumps books. Um, I know my kids are nowhere near being mature enough for this, but maybe I will be around Halloween, so we'll see. Then we have Pax. Um, this one I have heard so much about. Um, this is, let's see, it's about a fox. And, yeah, Pax and Peter have been inseparable ever since Peter rescued him as a kid. But one day, the unimaginable happens. Peter's dad enlists in the military and makes him return, him return the fox to the wild. Um, at his grandfather's house, 300 miles away from home, Peter knows he isn't where he should be with Pax. He strikes out on his own despite the encroaching war, spurred by love, loyalty, and grief to be reunited with his fox. I am a sucker for these kind of stories. Um, so, it's got tickled edges, which is annoying, but otherwise, I'm so excited. Then we have... Um, Her Majesty Grace Jones. So, as you can tell, somebody was selling a whole bunch of really old books. And I didn't know much about them, but they were all super cheap. So, um, I bought them. Why not, right? Uh, okay, so, first of all, Grace discovered that she had not been born in America. Then Geraldine said that Grace looked like a princess, like Princess Elizabeth. That clinched it. Even though she lived in Ohio, Grace decided she was really the rightful heir to the British throne. Oh, goodness. Um, then we have two Ramona books, Ramona the Brave and Ramona Quimby, age eight. I loved these books so much as a child, and I reread them um, for a Beverly Cleary readathon years ago, before maybe before I even had kids. Um, and she was like so bratty and awful. So I need to reread them now that I'm a mom and see um, what I think about them and see if we want to keep collecting this series but again 50 cents each i grabbed them it's a dollar gamble if we end up not you know not reading them that's fine then we have um a few more that i think we're going to use for like school stuff and then we'll get to graphic novels so um if you guys aren't homeschoolers or um whatever and don't know about this who was or what was series it is so good so we have who was lewis braille um Louis Braille, maybe. These are great for just introducing different people, different ideas. Um, we have Who Was Sally Ride? Who Was Alexander Crane Bell? Um, where is Area 51? And honestly, I learned so much from these books because I, I don't know what Area 51 is, but I'm excited to read. And then Who Was Walt Disney? So we have a whole bunch of these, but we did not have these ones. And so um, I'm really excited to have them and read them. Then we have um, this one. It's... it's what is it? America's funny but true history, 1800 to 1850, westward, haha. Um, I don't know. When we study that, this has got like mixed media and stuff. So, again, this one won't be one that we read for a while, but I think it'll be helpful to have maybe just a, a funnier spin on things. Then we have some of the I Survived books, um, which is also really good for teaching history. So we have I Survived uh, the Bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941. And then this one I think is a graphic novel. Yes, I Survived the Shark Attacks of 1916. So yikes. Um, not ready for these yet, but good to have on the shelf. Then I've got this whole series of Who Would Win. Um, so we have Who Would Win, Lion versus Tiger, Rattlesnake versus Secretary Bird, Um uh, let's see, Ultimate Bug Rumble, uh, Polar Bear versus Grizzly Bear, Wolverine versus Tasmanian Devil, um, Komodo Dragon versus King Cobra, T -re tri tri geez, Louise, Triceratops versus Spinosaurus, Tarantula versus Scorpion, Whale versus Giant Squid, Hornet versus Wasp, 
Hammerhead versus Bull Shark and Killer Whale versus Great Great White Shark. So um, all of these books, I think, are really educational for learning about the different animals, but it's also done in a really fun way. So um, we've never tried these, and I'm not sure, like, there's a lot of pictures and stuff. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll do these this year or what we'll do, but there's that. Okay, so now let's get into the graphic novels. You guys know I have kind of been in my graphic middle grade graphic novel phase, and my daughter loves them. Um, so there's a bunch here that we have. So first is one of my all-time favorites. I don't know. I'm shocked I didn't have this on my shelf, but The New Kid by Jerry Craft. I loved this book. Um, it's about a, a kid who goes to this new school, it's a predominantly white school, white, privileged, affluent. He lives in a predominantly black neighborhood, and he is mixed, and so he doesn't know where he fits in, and it's him trying to find his place, and I love this book. Then we've got, um, let's see, the entire, um, I forget, Act, maybe, or no, Crunch, what, Click series? I think it's Click. So we've got Click. These are all by Kayla Miller. Act. Um, crunch, clash, camp, and break. So these are all a part of the same series. I've recently read them. So if you want to know more about them, um, any of my wrap ups lately would, would be talking about these. Um, but they're really good, pretty wholesome, um, pretty relatable for like the tween age. So yeah, these are good. And my daughter has read most, if not, have you read all these? Yeah, she's read, I, she's read all of these. Um, definitely very appropriate and good story. So that is my entire middle grade haul for now. Um, I will tell you there's another one coming relatively soon because I just met a second grade teacher who is clearing out her classroom and gave up me 140 books. And so that that haul is going to be coming soon. Um, we'll probably spread these out. So maybe next month that'll be coming. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.